predictability. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Everywhere you look, there's a heart, it's a heart, a hand to hold on to. Everywhere you look, there's a face of somebody who needs you. Everywhere you look, when you're lost out there and you're all alone, life is waiting to carry you home. Everywhere you look, everywhere. After all these years in school, Batch, I've always wondered about cells. Are they even in fish? Well, I'll tell you, Hank. Cells actually are in fish. Animal cells, to be exact. But before we get into all that, what we really need to know is, where did cells come from? Who discovered them? Well, I'll tell you. Robert Hooke actually discovered them in 1660. Hook? Yeah, Hooke. In 1665. Yeah, and uh, well, what he actually discovered was uh, a dead cell wall on a cork. It's pretty crazy if you ask huh. me. It's a beautiful day today. Yeah, it is. Good day to fish. Huh? Man, I'm just not having any luck, though. I think I'm going to sit down for a minute, try again in a little bit. Oh, dude. So I heard y'all were talking about cells earlier. Yeah, actually, we're talking about animal cells. So is those like plant cells, but for animals? Yeah, actually, it's they're a lot alike, but there are a few differences. Like what? Well, first of all, uh, there are a few organelles that plants have that, don't, that animals don't, but there are also a few that animals have that plants don't. You want to hear about them? Let's hear about it. All right. So first, centrioles are only in animal cells, and so are cilias and flegolas. I can't pronounce those. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying. But also, chloroplasts are only in plant cells, just like cell walls. Fascinating. I know. It's just good stuff, this cell stuff. Man, the day just isn't long enough for all this cell talk. Let's come back tomorrow and talk about it some more. Let's do it. So guys, we're on a new boat because, uh, you know, wartime circumstances and uh, we'll be back right after we finish the war. Cells make up fly, but what makes up cells? Well, hey, hey, Ron, cells are made up of what are called organelles, which each serve an important purpose. Well, what are they? I don't know. I'm pretty sure they never taught us that. Gotta love public education. Yeah, they did. I just don't think y'all listen like I do. Wow, Hank, you're such a good student. All your teachers must love you, especially your biology teacher. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> perhaps most important of the organelles <laughs> as the nucleus. Oh, I think I've heard of that one. Isn't it like the brain of the cell? Yeah, that's where all the DNA is stored. Another organelle is the cell membrane. The cell membrane has a few different functions. <coughs> it protects the cell, transports proteins and such, and is important to the structure of the cell. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember some of these. What's that one that looks like an eyeball? <laughs> that would be the flagella, which provides 
movement for the cell along with the cilia. So I get that the membrane provides structure for a cell, but there must be something else to support it. Yes, Aaron. There are other organelles that are important for the structure of the cell. One is cytoplasm, which holds all the other organelles in place. The cell wall also provides structural support. But that one's only for plants, right? That's right, you pecker. <gasps> Thank you so much for tuning in to watch Five Guys Cells and Lines. And now for a word from our sponsors. Man, I wish I had a lemon lime soda right about now. You want a Sprite? Yeah, I'll take it. Is that LeBron James? <coughs> no. Sprite. <coughs> <coughs> And that was a word from our sponsors. Now back to Five Guys Cells and Lines. I understand all this organelle stuff, but what are macromolecules? I must have been tying my shoe or something when we learned about this. Well, boys and girls, my name is uh, Mike Crow Molecule, and I'm here to teach these idiots about uh, cells and stuff. Uh, but anyway, Hank, macromolecules are, or biomolecules can be found in cells and are large molecules that are formed by joining smaller organic molecules together. Well, what's an organic molecule? Um, an organic molecule is just a molecule that contains carbon. Kill these. Anyways, there are four types of micromolecules. You've got carbohydrates, uh, whose functions include energy, support, and protection. Uh, these carbohydrates can be found in stuff like bread. I like bread. I can tell. Other macromolecules are lipids. They store energy. A few examples of them are saturated and unsaturated fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. Hey, I use steroids fishing. Are you telling me my steroids have lipids in them? That's right. My favorite is proteins. Hey, now, now let me tell you why. All right, proteins are involved in pretty much everything. They even make up about 15% of your body. 20 if you're Wilson. <laughs> They can be found in meat and stuff. All right, <laughs> I want to hear it. But what's the, what's the fourth? The fourth would be nucleic acids. They store and transport genetic info. It's basically DNA. Do I have DNA? Yup. Do I? No. But you said they were in cells, but where in cells? Well, carbs are in the cell wall in plant cells and in the cell membrane in all cells. Lipids are in the cell membrane and the smooth and rough ER. Proteins, Wilson, are in ribosomes. So are nucleic acids, but they are also in the nucleus and the mitochondria. Wow, you guys are really in sync. It's almost like you're reading off a script. <laughs> well, that's about it for our micromolecules, Hank. Um, I hope that it helped. It sure did. Thanks, guys. You're welcome, Hank. Thanks for watching. We've really enjoyed making this video for the furtherment of your education about cells. This has been Five Guys Cells and Lines. Thank you for watching this public broadcasting service documentary. Ability. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV.